What up, what up, people? Happy, happy Saturday. Kamari Ellis here, the host of the Finance Rebel Show. Y'all know every Saturday we do our wealthy conversations. And this Saturday we got something special. All right, we're going to be talking about index investing. I know a lot of people were talking about it, so I said, well, let me put together an index investing 101 type masterclass type course that you all can get in on, learn some things from. Um, and hopefully become better investors from. But, you know, as we always do, as we always do, let's go ahead and let's get this party started. All right, folks, listen, y'all know every week we do our market rundown. So the markets are ablaze right now. The S&P 500 has hit another all-time high. It keeps breaking records. It keeps running higher. It's like the Energizer Bunny. Not sure how far it's going to go. Not sure when it's going to stop. But at some point, it's going to stop. But on Friday, the S&P 500 closed out at $4,352. Again, $4,352. Oil, again, like the stock market, it keeps running. It keeps running. It won't stop. Not sure what why, but it's just good. Well, I do know why, right? Because there's more demand um, on the streets, and in some instances, there's less supply. So that's almost like the perfect storm, perfect economic storm to see prices rise. So oil close at $75.19. Again, $75.19. Um, many people wonder why I cover these indicators, and I cover you know, the stock, the oil, the gold, even the Bitcoin sometimes, because believe it or not, it all impacts our lives in some way, shape or form. If we're thinking about the stocks, oftentimes many of us have 401k monies invested, which usually are invested in stock money, stock market. Many of us have pension money, again, which a lot of it is invested in the stock market. So I know a lot of us aren't keeping track, but I'm keeping track. And part of my job is to keep y'all in track, right, or intact. Now, oil, why does oil matter? Well, oil matters because everybody, or not all of us, a lot of us drive and a lot of us have homes that are powered by some kind of oil or maybe even gas, but it's all connected some way, somehow, some kind of way. So, again, oil closed at $75.19, and many people are calling for Three digit, that's right, three digit oil, which we haven't seen since almost 2008 when oil hit almost $150 a barrel. And I'd never forget that I think gas had hit about 450 in Pennsylvania. I know in California, it was about five, almost six, might have been seven bucks a gallon. Really, really high. All right, so just want to keep an eye on that. Listen. Keep saving y'all money because we don't know what's going to happen. Now, gold, gold, $1,787, $1,787. Last week, gold was down closer to $1,700 flat or even. This week, gold jumped a little bit. All right. So it's, it's really interesting what's going on in these markets right now. Now, the big announcement for the week, the big announcement for the week. Robinhood has announced their IPO. And for those of you who don't know what IPO stands for, it's initial public offering. Initial public offering. That's when private company like Robinhood now goes public, makes themselves open to public investing. Before they were just getting investment from private investors, you know, maybe some venture capitalists, maybe some rich folks, maybe some pension funds. And now they're saying, well, we're going to open up and let the whole world invest into our company. So they just released that. I'm not quite prepared to talk about it right now, but I'm going to review the S1 and I'll probably talk about it sometime over the weekend. Right. Y'all know it's Independence Day weekend. What we studied or not studied, observed on Monday. So maybe if I get some time away, I'll dig into it. Uh, I know they are definitely, they are definitely gearing towards a lot of the day trader crowd, a lot of the younger crowd who's getting into investing, 
But I saw a headline that said a lot of the Reddit folks are saying they don't want any parts of it. I find that interesting. A lot of them are still mad at what happened with the um, GameStop uh, when um, when they stopped trading on GameStop and things like that. So I think, you know, they, they call themselves getting a little bit of revenge on this. So just real quick, I see there's a couple people in the room today. Um, today, uh, we're going to be talking about index investing 101. Again, index investing 101. I want everybody to kind of get a flavor and understanding about index investing because we talk about it so much. All right. So for the most part, I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of question and answer in the middle. Now, you can ask a question for clarity, but don't ask the question that I'll ask to hold those questions, the more detailed ones till the end. Right. So we can get them all in and that people have a good experience going through this on the YouTubes and on the, the podcast and all of that. But I got to say what's up to my folks. Don Johnson's in the building. All right. Long term buy and hold index investing is a 90 percent solution for most investors. OK, we're going to talk about that. And Jose is in the building, too. All right. So good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening to those gentlemen. Good morning. Good afternoon to everybody that's watching live right here. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon to everybody that's on the replay squad as well. So thank you all for joining us here. So I wanted to, again, start off with a couple of things, with a couple of things. And let me just start off here Um, because I had something for you, but then I got a little delayed. I was working, I was working on, well, not working, but I was volunteering today on the Bodyhood uh, summer camp, summer youth camp called the ownership camp, Jimmy and Corey, shout outs to them. Hat tip to them because those brothers are doing their thing. I love what they're doing. It's about 50, 60, maybe even 70 kids over there, right? So for every child that's in there learning about money is a child that has a greater possibility of being a good money citizen, which basically means that they will take care of their money first and not let society dictate to them how to take care of their money. All right, so give me one second, y'all. I want to pull this up. I want to watch. I want to watch something real quick with the market maestro. <laughs> so give me one second. Give me one second, and I'm going to pull this up on the screen as we get ready to go. Let's start this off right. By the way, if you're just now joining, I'm Kamari. Y'all, let's do me a favor. As you're watching the Finance Rebel Show, if you know anyone that wants to learn about index investing, share this out with them because the whole purpose and aim for the Finance Rebel Show is to help increase the financial IQ in the black community. So keep that in mind. Don't keep me a secret, y'all. Share it out with the folks. Share it out with the folks. All right. So on the screen, we have the market maestro himself, Mr. Warren Buffett. And I want to bring this up and start it off here. You know what? I'm not sure everybody can hear that. Do me a favor, everybody in the chat, let me know if you can hear this. Anything can happen in terms of markets. And All right, so we got to know. All right, hold on. You can bet on America. Let me start over from the beginning. But you gotta have to be Let me start over from the beginning. Give me one second. One second. Having a little technical, technical difficulties. <laughs> All right, I always have to hit that button. What says this year? Oops. And I closed out the screen. So give me one second, y'all. I wanted to pull up warm because... As much as Warren is a big, big um, investment figure and icon in the markets, Warren also is a big proponent of index investing. And we're going to break it. We're going to talk about why also. Don Johnson kind of tipped the hat a little bit, but he's absolutely correct. He's absolutely correct.
Give me one second. Matter of fact, I found a better link anyway. So let's get this party started. True Blue is uh, the largest industrial staffing company in the United States. Bear with me with the commercial that I don't get paid from. Significant number of transactions each day, each week, each month. And we can't, we can't review all this. And what the, the risk cloud platform does is it creates a kind of a, a culture of continuous monitoring. Now it's about fixing a problem instead of identifying the problem. I think it's the same thing that makes most sense practically all the time. And, and that is to consistently buy an S&P 500 low cost index fund Keep my eyes through thick and thin, especially through thin, because uh, the temptation gets, when you see bad headlines in the newspaper, maybe to say, well, maybe I should skip a year or something. So just keep buying. American business is going to do fine over time. So you know you know the investment universe is going to do very well. The Dow Jones Industrial Average went from 66 to 11,497 in one century. And and then since that century has ended, it's, it's more or less doubled again. Uh, American business is going to do well. The trick is not to pick the right company. It's to be, because sh- most people aren't equipped to do that. And plenty of times I make mistakes on that. The trick is to essentially buy all the big companies through the S&P 500 and to do it consistently and to do it in a very, very low cost way because costs really matter in investments. Uh, if, if returns are going to be 7 or 8% and you are paying 1% for fees, that, that makes an enormous difference in how much money you have on retirement. At the annual meeting for Berkshire Hathaway this year, you introduced a special guest to the audience of 40,000 shareholders who were watching. It was Jack Bogle. Why did you want to recognize Jack Bogle? I think Jack Bogle has done more for American investors than any other uh, person connected with Wall Street or the investment process because he, with a number of other people, he came up with the idea of the index fund. He wasn't the sole uh, thinker behind it, but he was the guy that implemented it and 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 crusaded for it. But now there's trillions of dollars in low-cost index funds. Those people are going to have better lives. They're going to have better retirements. Their kids are going to inherit more money because uh, of Jack Bogle and his efforts. All right, well, that's that's Warren's take on index investing. I agree with him in a large respect. Um, index investing can be very, very, very powerful when used properly, when used properly, right? But again, let's let's break down index investing. What is an index? So I want to share a slideshow. I've been hard at work for you guys. I wanted to put together something that was comprehensive, something that everybody could follow along with so that, so that, you know, everybody can get maximum value out of this. So give me, give me one second. So everyone should be able to see this on the screen, right? So this is just basically index investing one-on-one. And so as Warren talked about it, right? Index investing has a lot of positives. It has a lot of potential. A lot of people have made a lot of money. Um, just, just as a quick aside, a lot of people talk about how bad 401ks are. Well, essentially everyone that's investing in a 401k plan and or a pension plan is essentially doing index index investing for the most part, right? So index investing is a passive investing strategy, meaning that you do not have to sit in front of your computer all day long and try to trade in and out of stocks, trying to figure out what's next, trying to figure out uh, which company is gonna have the best earnings. But, but essentially, like Warren just said in the video, figuring out which companies are the best. 
And remember, a lot of times people love to talk about the stock market as stocks are kind of singular and they don't, they, they reside by themselves. But and in fact, stocks are actually small pieces of ownership in a company. Again, small pieces of ownership in a company. All right. So let's talk about index investing uh, 101. So who am I? Uh, a lot of y'all know me. I'm the finance rebel, Kamara Yellis. I'm now an enroll agent. I've been working in enroll agent, by the way, is the IRS's top tax credential. All right. The Internal Revenue Service, the the um, tax authority in the United States. All right. I'm also a former portfolio manager, meaning that I used to invest money for clients on Wall Street. OK, I have over 25 years of financial service experiences, experience. I'm originally from Philadelphia and you can find me on Twitter at the finance rebel and or Instagram at the finance rebels at all. Right. So at the very bare bones, right, the very basics to understand index investing, you have to understand what's the index. Now, a lot of times people throw around terms. They don't know what it means, what it is. But again, what is an index? Right. And so an index is a make believe portfolio. Right. It's. It's a basket of sometimes companies, right? Sometimes commodities, sometimes currencies, sometimes bonds, but they are all different types of makeups and you can use them in many different ways. And again, usually a company will say, this is a list of companies that I like or that we like, and this is what makes up the index, right? So here's a couple examples. The S&P 500 It's the 500 largest publicly traded companies in the United States. Now, a lot of these companies are also multinational companies, right? Meaning that they make money all across the globe. Okay. Now, again, S&P 500, that's 500 companies. The Dow Jones is another example. A lot of us probably hear that every night. Every night um, when we turn into the news, I don't watch a whole lot of news anymore because it's too negative, but they still talk about it. All right. And the NASDAQ. So each one of these indexes has their own characteristics. Um, they track different things. All right. So the very first index was the Dow Jones. And here I have 12 companies listed on there. Probably if anybody is listening to the sound of my voice or watching this video live, you're probably like, who are these companies? We have companies like American Cotton Oil, American Sugar, American Tobacco, right? Chicago Gas, Distilling and Cattle and Feeding, um, General Electric. Many of us probably know General Electric. Electric. Now, this index was created back in the 1800s. Again, it was the first one. And you probably don't know a lot of these because the, comp the, the, and the, the investment environment has changed over the years. Now, What's really interesting why they came up with this, because Charles Dow came up with this because they wanted a simple way to track the U.S. economy. So from the, again, the humble beginnings in the 1800s, where they assembled these 12, these 12, um, these 12 uh, and stocks to track the overall track the company, you see what the makeup is, tobacco, sugar, cotton, gas, leather, rubber electricity. A lot of these things were staples, everyday staples that you needed in everyday American life. And so that's why these companies were some of the very, very first companies to make it on the index. Now, for a long time, General Electric was in the Dow Jones, but they removed them recently over the last couple of years because their stock price dropped so hard. So Many of these indexes also have various listing requirements. All right. So this is the modern day Dow Jones now. So the modern day Dow Jones is 30 stock companies, right? So right now you can look, it's a night and day comparison of where it started to where it is now, right? So when I bring up all these things as it relates to indexes, remember that indexes change, okay? Indexes change. Um, they will, they will morph and, and, and change to fit what's going on in the current economic cycle of the United States. All right. So right now 
We have Microsoft, Apple, Johnson & Johnson, Visa, Intel, right? All the way to IBM Boeing. So before it was more, it was more industrial type companies, right? Or it was all industrial type companies. Now you got a mix. You got some computing, right? Technology, you got some pharmaceuticals, you got some financials, you got, you know, some telephone companies. It's a big mix. But the thing that's consistent is they're all still big companies. They're not, they're not your smaller run of the mill companies. They're your your bigger companies that are doing considerable amount of business and are taking up or at least driving the U.S. economy um, in a certain direction. All right. The other one a lot of us hear a lot is the S&P 500. Even when I played the clip from Warren Buffett, he talked about the S&P 500. Now, the Dow Jones and S&P 500 move very similarly. They're not exactly the same. They move very similarly, though. If you were to look at the day-to-day -day interactions or the day-to-day -day movements of the S&P 500, you would see that they almost move lockstep with one another, okay? But, and they have a lot of the same components or holdings or members that are in the overall indexes, but they are two different indexes. Again, the S&P 500 is the listing of 500. It's actually like... 504, 505 U.S. largest big companies or U.S. companies that are publicly traded. Now, a lot of people want to know how to invest into index funds, okay? How to invest in index funds. But before you start investing, right, and remind, remember, this is just one-on-one. Bare bones, basic, y'all. Because I find a lot of us want to do all the fun stuff, but we don't have the basics. Now, before you start investing, what's your why? Why are you investing? Are you saving for retirement? Are you saving for college? Are you are you saving just for overall wealth creation? Are you are you investing for some other reason? Right? You could I I have friends and people who who started off put money in the stock market and they were they were investing so they could have money to buy a house they were investing to have money for seed money to start a business i have all those kind of different combinations but all of these factors should drive why and where you are investing all right another big factor is time frame what's your time frame when will you need this money right that will dictate what index you are looking at Right, how much risk you can take with your money. If let's say you're a, a three year old child, right? Um, and well, let's say your grandparent, your grandchild is three years old, and you want to start investing for them, investing for them for college. Well, more than likely they'll have 15, 20 years before they get to college. So you have 15, 20 years to let the money grow and let the money sit. So you don't necessarily have to be worried about any market or short-term market changes, fluctuations, and crashes. You can just kind of almost set it and forget it. And begin, And remember, I said this is a passive, passive investment strategy, okay? Index investing. This isn't for the sexy, y'all. This is for the boring folks who want to make money and don't want to be all glamorous and on social media talking about they've got the, the formula for the best stock performance ever discovered by man. All right. This is for those people who work every day. This is for those people who run a business every day. This is for people who, you know, have some extra money and they want to put it to the side. They don't just want to leave it in the bank and just let it sit, but they want some growth out of it. All right. Next thing you need is some money. Now, Money, you don't need a whole lot of money to start. You can start indexing or index, index investing with as simple as $1. There's a lot of places where you can do that. At, all right, which leads us to where's your brokerage account? So you also need a brokerage account, okay? Now, the last thing that a lot of people don't talk about is discipline. When you are doing index investing, you need discipline. Again, this is a passive investment strategy. 
However, the fuel that makes this passive investment strategy work is by doing what's called dollar cost averaging. Dollar cost averaging, that's what you need to make it work, which simply means that you put money in on a consistent basis over and over and over again, and usually the same amount. So a great example of that would be you work at a job, you work at nine to five, you have a 401k, and in your 401k, you get a great free match from your employer. And you said, you know what? I'm also going to contribute some money along with this as well to help accelerate the free money that I'm getting from this match. And so, you know what? I'm not sure about my finances right now, but I want to put $50 every time I get paid into my 401k plan. And I'm going to do this religiously. It becomes a lifestyle. It becomes your thing that you do. And then over time, at least what history tells us, people that do that tend to have more money than those who don't. Now, again, these are all hypotheticals. These are all hypotheticals, right? Everybody's situation is going to be different. Everybody's situation is going to be nuanced and have detail to it. Because your my 50 may be somebody else's 500. And somebody else's 500 could be somebody else's 1,000 that they are investing in every month but here's the thing usually what my mentor told me was usually you get in what you put out so you can't begin to think about investing if you're not disciplined enough to keep investing it's very very important all right so now with index investing right we, we've talked about the types of indexes to a certain degree we talked about your why your what Next thing is, is what index do you want to invest in? There are, there's a plethora of invest of indexes that you can invest in. Now, remember I said these are make-believe portfolios. These are made-up portfolios like Dow Jones is a company. The S&P 500 is a company. What they do is they just do plenty of research. And then again, they compile these lists. And in those lists, they are then sold or used by other investment companies and gives them a guiding template to begin investing. All right. But again, in the index, you have a stock index, you have bond indexes, you have real estate indexes, commodities, international stocks, currencies, specialty. Now, when I say specialty, I'm talking about maybe like a gold miner, um, maybe like a telecom. Like a, th these are indexes that are all gold miners, all telecom. Maybe they're all international stocks or they could be stocks specifically in Japan or stocks in China or India or Malaysia or South Africa or Brazil. Those all could be their own special index, right? By the way, y'all see real estate is on the slide as well. So for many of you who are itching to get into real estate and you're like, I really don't have a whole lot of money right now. I don't want to do the whole creative investing thing where you're doing door knocking and asking people to take over their mortgages, right? Doing creative financing. You can start off with investing in the stock market, excuse me, using the stock market as a way to invest in real estate. So it's endless. You can do a lot with it. Um, and we'll talk about that some more. But again, what is your why telling you, right? What, what do you, where do you want to go? What do you need? If you are planning to invest in, let's say you're 30 years old and you don't plan on investing until say 60. Well, again, you can just buy like the S&P 500, like Warren Buffett said. But as this slide says, it's like, well, what flavor do you want? Because there's so many different flavors, right? You can get vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, right? You can get the S&P 500 from, from spiders. You can get VU or VOO from Vanguard, which again, Warren talked about with, with Jack Bogle, who started Vanguard, right? They have one of the biggest S&P 500 ETFs. Now, I'm going to talk about something real quick, just to give some clarity. Just real quick, real quick, because usually when the term um, index investing comes up, people are talking about straight mutual funds and sometimes ETFs. Now, when I talk about index investing, 
I talk about ETFs usually. I'm biased. Admittedly, I'm biased. I think the ETF investment tool is better than the mutual fund investment tool. Now, again, referencing back to Warren Buffett, what did he say? You want to have low cost fees, right? Um, ETFs tend to check the box for low cost fees. They're typically not as expensive as your overall mutual fund. But guess what? They're related. They're very similar. But again, ETFs have a different a different set of characteristics. ETFs um, have more liquidity, meaning that you can get access to your cash a lot faster. So if it's 930 when the stock market opens and you say, you know what? I had to pay for my son's or daughter's college tuition and I have it inside of maybe a savings account or a brokerage account where they where you invested into some stocks, you can get access to it. Or maybe you had some money in a 529 plan or UPMA or a UTMA account, whatever it may be, you can get it right then, right there, usually. With a mutual fund, however, you usually have to wait till the end of the day because mutual funds, you have to actually, you have to actually wait for them to buy it. Usually when you're buying mutual funds, you're doing just that. You're buying into the mutual fund company, which then in turn is buying the stocks or the investments. Typically when you're buying an ETF, an exchange traded product, exchange traded product, you are buying into a, a ETF, like the, the actual investment. And within that ETF, you have rights to the individual shares that are underneath it that are owned. So it's less layers. Also, ETFs tend to have better tax situation is a better tax situation than your typical mutual funds. Now we can get into different types of um of, of accounts, right? Your IRAs, your traditionals versus your personal accounts, but that's not what this is for. If you want to mitigate some of your tax situations, that's not what this presentation is for today. But again, I wanted to make that clear. Again, when I when I worked professionally in the market, I actually traded ETFs. I mean, I traded some other individual stocks as well, but primarily I had to invest, manage, and trade ETFs. And so I am biased. I just laid out my bias. Um, some folks won't lay out their bias. I, I like to lay out my bias because I believe it's important to um, give rationale um, and to why you, you feel and believe and move in a certain way. So it also it also helps to cut down on confusion as well. But again, if you have any questions on that, just save them towards the end of the presentation and we'll definitely get into it um, for everybody that's here. All right. So back to the slides, back to the slides. So again, when I say what flavor, right, there is a plethora of just S&P 500 ETFs and they are done in different ways. And again, this is just our 101 selection, but I will say this right again, every index is different. Um, you have some, some S&P 500 where they're waiting, right? Each one of their, their stocks or their investments are all weighted equally. You have some who are weighted by the price of the stock, and then you have some who are weighted by the market cap of the stock. So there's all these different ways of creating indexes. So you got to do your research. You got to do your own work. All right. But we'll definitely talk about that some more. So if we just use the S&P S &P 500 as an example, oops, as an example, like Warren Buffett did, right? And we're looking to figure out what index, right? Now, what fund, right? Because the funds follow the indexes. Right. And again, the funds follow the indexes. So what fund are we going to use to execute our investment strategy? All right. So now we're going to buy the index fund. And, and so let me back up. I want to show you something real quick. I want to show you something real quick. Let's see if I can find that. Um, da, 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 da. Give me one second, y'all. I wanted to show you something because I thought it would it would be helpful for everyone to see just how many different um, 
ETFs there are, right? Um, there are a lot. There's a whole lot. Give me one second. That's not it. That's not it. Now, if anybody is up to speed on where we are right now, just put a one in the chat. Let me know that you're following along as I go ahead and pull up this other screen. I wanted to show you real quick. And so if you're ever wondering where to go when you're looking for when you're looking for ETFs, there are a lot of sites out there. Um, there's two in particular that are focused on only uh, ETFs. So ETFDB.com, again, ETFDB.com. They've been tracking ETFs for quite some time. Back in like 08 or 09, maybe even 07, 2007, they started looking at and researching ETFs um, and do a pretty good job at it. Do a pretty good job at it. And again, just again, for clarity, there are some ETFs that are actively managed, meaning that you have a guy like me who will sit up there and they will pull the trigger on what ETFs they're going to buy, right? Or what investments they're going to buy inside of that ETF, right? And then you have other ETFs like at a Vanguard, this is not a recommendation to buy or sell Vanguard, but at a place like Vanguard where they just follow the index. That's the passive investment that I'm talking about. Right? Not talking about um not talking about you trying to be a stock tra- a stock jockey and figuring it all out. All right, so here you have here you have the S&P 500, right? So I went on ETF, ETF DB. I went on ETF DB and I pulled this up, right? So these are all the different S&P 500 tracking, right? These are all the ETFs that are tracking the S&P 500. So we have SPY, IVV, VOO, SPLG. Now these are all the ticker symbols. You can find all of these ticker symbols um, in any of your brokerage accounts that you might be using or anytime you're using um, or just doing research, just Googling, right? So again, sometimes it can be a bit confusing. It can be a bit confusing. Um, real quick, I just want to show you something, right? So you can you can track ETFs by type, right? By the issuer, um, by what sector or what, what type of ETF they provide. Let's go here. Uh, they have some of the, the cheapest ETFs, the largest ETFs. So let's go to the largest, right? SPY, the Spiders, is the oldest. It's the oldest ETF, all right? It was created first. It was created in like 1992, 1993, somewhere around there. It's got over 376, almost 380, excuse me, almost $377 billion in assets under management. That's how much money investors, individual and institutional or big banks or hedge funds have placed under the care of Vanguard to manage these funds. All right. But then you have IVV, which is iShares. iShares is owned by BlackRock. Okay. So on usually on any given day, iShares or BlackRock is number one in terms of asset management around the world. And then you have Vanguard which on any given day is also number one or number two around the world. So then you have, again, a couple of different flavors of this. All right. Um, VLO, VTI, the Qs. Now the Qs represent NASDAQ. Okay. Again, these are all, these are all index funds. They follow an index. Then you have international, right? Developed markets. Um, and then each one of these, when it talks about FTSC, which is also um, referred to as the FTSE, um, that's, I'm trying to think of it's England or France off the top of my head. That's a market over in England and France, in Europe, um, that they cover. 
Then you have your MS, MSCI, all right? Then you have AGG, which cover bonds or aggregate bonds. So you have some U.S. Treasury bonds. You got some mortgage bonds in there. You got some corporate bonds. Like, there really is almost an infinite universe of ET, excuse me, of ETFs that you can invest in. You have small caps, Russell 2000. For anybody who doesn't know, the Russell 2000 is another index that follows nothing but small cap stocks. It's 2000 of them called the Russell 2000. The Russell 1000 or the Russell 1000 growth is more for your large cap stocks. All right. You also have gold. So again, any flavor you want, any temperament that you might have, any objective you're looking to get to, you can you can execute with different types of indexes or different types of indexes. So if you say, you know what, I just want to do like Warren Buffett does or what Warren Buffett suggested. I just want to invest in the index, set it and forget it, like he said, in the S&P 500. So you could pick one of those ETFs that I suggested. They're going to have the lowest, they're going to have the lowest expense ratio. Um, and they're probably going to have some of the better management overall. So just keep that in mind when you are looking at your overall, your overall investment strategy, right? Now, where do you go to buy the index? Because that's the next step, right? People are always asking me, well, where should I go to start investing? Where should I go to where should I go to, to buy the stock, right? Or to buy the index or to buy the ETFs? That's pretty simple. And I'm not trying to be um, chic or smart here. You just get your brokerage account. Very easy. We are no longer in the times where you needed 100000 10000 5000 or $1,000 to open an account. Right now, you can open an account with no money. And they just ask you to fund it later. I just ask you to fund it later. So it it just really depends on, you know, who do you like? As we talked about, as we talked about uh Robinhood, right? Robinhood being one of those potential places. Um, I do have an affiliate for Robinhood, but I'm not sharing it today because I just want this to be about us. You can go on Robinhood and set it up. You can open up an account at TD Ameritrade. You can open up an account at E-Trade, you can open up an account. Um, uh, public is, is another one. Um, you can open an account up at. So those are essentially the ingredients that you need when you're talking about getting started doing index investing. You just need to understand your why, right? Understand your why. Why are you doing this? What's motivating you? How long do you have, right? Do you, are you thinking about retiring in the next three to four years? Well, if that's the case, when you retire, you have to convert your savings into an income stream. And again, if that's the case, you might want to start looking at changing over from having a whole bunch of money in stocks because, it's, again, the market's at an all-time high this week to securing it in some other type of assets. Again, that is not investment. That is not an investment recommendation. I'm not telling you to buy or sell. I am, however, telling you to, to rethink about your plan and about your place in life right now. I'm gonna pick on Don Johnson, right? Because Don talks about this. He plans on retiring in the next five years or so. Um, he's been stacking his bread some of his goals include funding his Roth IRAs. And Don is primarily an index investor. He sets it and forgets it. I bet, though, I have a, a curious suspicion that if Don really wanted to, Don could be a beast out here doing all kinds of anal analysis in terms of fundamentals and maybe even some chart reading on investments and, and looking at different things and getting a little, a little sexy with it. But for the most part, he stays in his lane, okay? Now, again, we talked about the brokerages. We talked about your why. We talked about how to go about and start off investing um, for your overall future and what you want to do. All you got to do now is do it. 
All you got to do now is do it. So again, I appreciate everybody being here. Um, if you are not on Facebook or YouTube, you can't see the screen. And on the screen, I'm just saying thank you. Right. I'm just saying thank you. That's it. That's it. But now the presentation part is over. Whatever questions you might have, go ahead and throw them in the chat. I see there's some people um, that have joined in the conversation, so I'll definitely acknowledge them. Whoa, showbiz, showbiz 773. Seven, What's up, man? Should be so good, seven nine. <laughs> That's my man Kenny over there. How you doing, brother? Uh, Blue Lotus Sun, how are you? Uh, connection Consultings. You know what, Connections, you never send me an email. I got to follow up with you. Um, Nicole, no, how are you? Mad Dog Black 06, how are you? Welcome, 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 welcome. All right, y'all. So, what topics or what questions do you have about this topic? Let's get the party started. I know y'all been chopping at the bit. Uh, to, to jump in here. So let's get at it. All right. And so Nicole No says everyone hit the like button. Yes. Y'all know I'm fighting the machine. I'm fighting the algorithm. So yes, please like this video that signals to the algorithm that I'm doing a good job. Now, if I'm not doing a good job and you think I'm suck, just say, Kamar, you suck. And we can get it over with. Then that means I got to go back to the drawing board and think about what I'm doing with my life. <laughs> All right. And try to figure out how to make this better. All right. So let's Let's look at this real quick here. Let's get into this real quick. All right, for those folks who are on Instagram, do me a favor, put your questions in the little, the little question mark box at the bottom. Um, I'll be sure to get at those. Okay, Kay Landis is in the building. Hey, meet me, 19. How are you? Mid Atlantic is here. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? All right, so who else got it? Michael Williams, Walter Paul, um, Miss Edith's here. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? All right. So Don Johnson says, great topic. Appreciate that, Don. Thank you, sir. All right. Let's see what else we got here. Great topic. All right. Walter Paul says, truth is that the best investment is art. It's art and science. Um, It's definitely art. Like, I see the art in it. Uh. I've told a story before where, where I brought Apple at 23 and I sold out because I needed the money to pay for my son's uh, capital school tuition. Um, Steve Jobs had just came back. I didn't do a whole lot of analysis. Definitely wasn't doing technical analysis at that point. But I knew that Steve was a visionary and that even though what folks say about him, a lot of it's true, isn't the most colorful things or nice things. I knew he was going to drive the company higher. And that turned out right. Brought in that 23, jumped the 45, split. Um, then uh, ran back. It, I think it split to like 20. I need to go back and revisit that chart. But it, it like 20, and then it ran back up to like 40 or 50, something like that. But I was able to then sell out and then pay a year's worth of tuition for my son. Wasn't what I envisioned. Wasn't what I wanted. However... It saved me in the long haul, and that's what the money is there for. So, Angie Ang Fresh, what's up, lady? Monica, you tell her, how are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. Debt Free Dad, how are you? Hey, Debt Free, I saw some of the comments you left on my YouTube channel. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, appreciate you. All right. I'm fine. Do you know why it is art? Well, why I call it art? Because I think you can see some of the abstract things in it and, and make money with it. Now, if you're talking about Paul Getty, um, I don't know if Paul Getty was art. Paul was a crook. <laughs> just like just like Rothschild. Not Rothschild. Just like um, Rockefeller. Rockefeller was a crook. What they did was great. Yeah, but when you go and you look at the history, how they broke the laws, how they um, swindle people. Um, I... <laughs> I'm for the truth. So he definitely was swindling folks, getting over on folks, talking about um, uh, Rockefeller. Now, with Getty, Getty was interesting. There's a movie about Getty and how uh, his son got kidnapped or his grandson got kidnapped and he wouldn't pay the fee. And I think they wound up cutting his son's hand off or something. It's been a while since I've seen it. Very bizarre, though. Very bizarre. All right. Uh, Death Free Dad says, do you think this is true? 
the problem with common ownership of index funds is that you have institutional firms, BlackRock, Vanguard, State Street, become the biggest owners. Now, if y'all pay attention to what Defrey Dad just did, he just went over all the big all the big companies we were just talking about, right? State Street is who owns Spiders, right? Spiders is the very, very first um, uh, ETF, right? Vanguard, we talked about with Jack Bowler just a minute ago, and BlackRock, which owns iShares. Um, I, I don't necessarily see a problem with it. Um, to answer your question, debt free debt, I I don't see a problem with it because who else is going to do it? Because basically they use the innovative technology to buy these shares, have those shares being divided or splintered or fractioned, right? So then now more people can get into the market. That's why BlackRock, Vanguard, State Street have become so big. Um, and you have to understand the fundamentals sometimes looking at that. Because while they are technically the biggest owners on paper, they're really just conduits, right? They're, they're really just pass-throughs. They're not really the, the owners. I'm the owner. You're the owner. Um, my man, my man Don's the owner. Jose's the owners. Anybody who's buying, who's buying ETFs are owners. Um, Michael Williams says, do you recommend buying a total market index uh, slash ETF versus dividing into evenly between large, mid, and small cap? So for the beginner, again, and y'all know I slant everything to the beginning here. For the beginner, I just say you buy the overall market. Um, Vanguard has a couple that I like, again, low cost. I want to say VT uh, is the one. It's a world one, though, right? Um, also, VTI, VOO, and SPY, they're all fine. Now, as you start to get a little bit more advanced, you can start looking at at um, large cap, mid cap, small cap. And basically, for those who, who don't know or are just joining, right, large cap talks about the typical size of a company in these ETFs. A large cap company usually is... 10 billion or more in market cap, right? Uh, off the top of my head, Ford comes to mind. They are a large cap company. Um, off the top of my mind, GE is a large cap company. Usually the larger cap companies have more established business, have more established funding, have more established ways of getting um, human capital or employees, which is important to run a business. All of these things are factors. So again, I would say at the beginning, you can start with a with the total market. Now, again, as you as you get more sophisticated, as you get more educated, you can look at the other market cap sectors or or um, spaces. Because, for example, right now you'll see all the folks talk about growth versus value. Which one is better? Some people say uh, um, uh, stock uh, or value investing is dead. I disagree with that. But a lot of people would say that. What happens is things go in cycles. So if you can understand the cycles, then you can start to weight more heavily into a particular style, right? Large cap, small cap, growth versus value. Um, or you could just do the overall. You can, you can do both. You can do both. All right, Defrey Death says owners like owners of companies like Ford and GM, it hurts these companies' incentive to compete with each other, leads to higher prices and slower economic growth. Um, I disagree. I disagree. If you look at Apple, Apple is the largest, the largest holding in this about every every index fund slash ETF. And Apple kicks butt all the time. Because at the end of the day, it's still about returning value to shareholders, whether their shareholders are coming through an ETF, if they're coming through a drip program, a dividend reinvestment program, or just a straight um, direct investor, they still have to return value to them. Does it give, does it potentially give some of the, the, uh, the ETF companies and sponsors maybe a little bit more weight? Their proxy and other things, maybe not really though. 
because the individual investors still have to do that. If you go back and you look at the ETFs, they are uh, prospectuses, just like mutual funds. So meaning that you have to disclose certain things, you have certain rights. So I, I would, again, I I'm, would push back this, this a little bit respectfully, <laughs> respectfully. Um, because again, like I said, Apple, Apple's leading the charts, right? Apple is a two trillion dollar company. They're still competing. They're still out there kicking butt. It's still a great company, like Warren Buffett was talking about in the beginning of the show. We want to look at investing in in um, good companies, not just good stocks. All right, Walter says, any stock that you invest in that represents any company will eventually die. But a piece of art like a painting will last throughout centuries. I get it. Um, I get it. But here's the question. The art throughout centuries, um, it has to be valuable to somebody. There has to be a marketplace for it. Like Basquiat. Like, people know about Basquiat. Basquiat wasn't always that famous, though. Through the likes of the hip hop community, they made Basquiat more famous, right? But you got your Picassos and um, uh, who's my man that did the Sistine Chapel. Um, oftentimes, there's no market for this art because art is a very subjective thing. Um, yes, art can be a great tool um, of storing and transferring wealth, but at the end of the day, it's still needs to have a marketplace. Somebody's got to want it. Demand has to be there. Economics are always at play in everything we do. Somebody has to want it and supply has to be there in order to be met, in order to create a market for it. Because if there's no market for it, there's no money for it. All right. Hey, Nicole. Um, uh, she says, dollar cost averaging is the truth. Started started IRA and mutual funds in 1996. Hey, how you doing? Can I borrow a dollar? <laughs> that means the coals hold on a couple of dollars, y'all. That's what's up, though. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. I mean, 96. So that's good. Thank you, Michelangelo. Um, I want to say the uh, Medici family funded them. So without money, there would have never been any Michelangelo. Somebody's got to pay for the art. Um, somebody's got to pay for it for the art to continue to be there. All right, so you can help me. So can you help me create demand for my art? I don't know. Is your art any good? And I don't say that in any any disrespectful frame, right? Is it good? Um, do people want it? Because good, again, is very subjective, right? Some people think um, Picasso stuff is dope. Um, I think it's okay. Um, so I was going to say Picasso stole from a lot of African inspired stuff but nobody talks about that right but all artists all creatives and i think we're all all human beings are creative in some way shape form or fashion and we're all inspired by something right it's not some people will say all thoughts come from god and cool i'm not necessarily going down that pike but what i am saying is these thoughts come from somewhere whether you're influenced by somebody whether you got um uh, an inspiration. For example, Jose. Jose is in the community. He's on almost every week with us. Jose inspired me to one, talk about dividends, which I've, I've been talking about dividends, but to talk about it in a way that kind of Jose was talking about it with the snowball effect. And even now I started to implement some of the things that he was talking about. Now I knew about snowball effect for a long time, but Jose was the one who kind of influenced me or at least shined a light on something and said, maybe you should think about this. And he didn't say, hey, Kamari, you should think about this. He said, hey, this is what I'm doing, right? And I love the idea of compound growth. It's very, very powerful. So I said, you know what? Let me check this out. Now, if y'all haven't seen that episode or listened to that episode, that's the uh, my new investment strategy episode. You can check it out on the on the podcast and you can find it on YouTube somewhere. All right, so... Walter, what um, what link is that? Do you have that up somewhere? Is it on IG? I don't like just clicking on. Is it on your? Is it on your, your Facebook page? Share the link if it's on your Facebook page. 
One of the things about art, though, again, it's very subjective. It's very subjective. But here's the thing. You got to share it with the people in order to create or discover demand. So the stock market is very, very genius, y'all. They have a, a term called market discovery or price discovery when, it, when they're trying to figure out pricing for various securities. Products very much are the same way. If you're trying to sell a candy bar, you want to know what's the best price to sell this candy bar at, at this particular place, at this particular time, right? Because all of those factors come into play. For example, if you ever notice when companies put, put things on sale, uh, the, the, the example I can think of, and by the way, y'all, this is all the top of my head. The example I can think of all the top of my head right now is supermarkets, right? If you don't sell it, you smell it. Meaning that there's an expiration date on produce in supermarkets or food in supermarkets. And if you don't sell it, it starts to rot. So they're trying to figure out how quickly they can sell it. So one, they can turn around their inventory because a lot of times their cash is tied up in inventory. And number two, they don't want dead inventory, right? Because then once it's dead, it's, it's worthless. So a lot of times they would rather discount, discount the inventory so they can get it in, in the hands of the customer and get it off the shelf so they can get that turn over. So it, it, it makes it, it makes it move a lot faster. Right. But again, you got to get the market in. So they got to get people into the market to buy the eggs and buy the milk, buy the bananas, buy the grapes, buy the chicken, buy the steak, right? They need all that. So they got to get people in. That's marketing. That's sales. That's promotions. Um, and if more businesses started to kind of think about their business in some way, shape, form, like a supermarket, I think we would see more of us, more businesses doing better. Um, uh, da, 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 da. but I'll just to put a period on that. Um, Walter, I'll say this more artists have to highlight their stuff. If you want to make a living, if you don't want to be a broke artist, you got to highlight your stuff. And listen, it takes a lot of cojones and thick skin to be an artist because everybody got an opinion. By the way, shout out to my sister, Shakari Richardson. Everybody's talking dirty about her. I'll just say this, right? While she is an artist in your typical shape, form, or fashion, this sister has done, has made accomplishments that 99.99% .99 of us could ever do. She's competed at a level that 99.9999% of us have never seen, nor can fathom, nor have the discipline to train for it. And then this lady had a death in her family and people were trying to make light of it because she said her biological mother, like she didn't know her mother, like her mother's not still her mother. <laughs> I just really think a lot of us need to really get more in touch with our humanity. Stop trying to judge one another all the time and, and have some real empathy for folks. So my thoughts, um, and by the way, I'll say all that to say because she got disqualified from the Olympics for using marijuana, right? And whatever shape, form, or fashion. And everybody's just like, well, she knows the rules. She has to go by the rules. True. But what about the, the, the ultimate rule, which is human nature? And clearly the sister was traumatized because if, when you say your biological mother, that means you were not with your mother. Doesn't mean you don't know your mother. Doesn't mean you don't love your mother. But yet and still, she was competing at an all-time high for the Olympics qualified, right? She's still qualified. And let's not act like weed is this performance enhancement drug. It's not, <laughs> it's not, but that's all I have to say. Y'all listen, just be more human, be more humane, stop judging folks. Um, and, and be more helpful. All right. So Walter said, yes, that is direct to my art site. There are over 136,000 images there. And there are over 500,000 images in my collection. So are you a creator or a curator? Walter, curious, curious, curious. <laughs> my, 
My man, I love that, Walter. I will never be poor broke because I'm invested in stocks. Right on, right on, right on. All right, what do I think about um, Ben Greenwood founded by Killer Mike? So it's not just Killer Mike. It's Killer Mike. It's um, Andrew Jackson, who is a legend. Everybody should know who Andrew Jackson is. And there's one other brother. I can't think of his name. Um, I don't have any real comment about it right now. I will say this. Some people have directed me to do some more research on it because everybody knows I love things all regarding black business, black banks, because it's a way for our communities to become more self-sufficient and not expose ourselves to overall diamond society who looks down on us at every at every turn, except when it's to make money off of our backs, except for when it's to steal our creativity. Um, so I believe we need to be more self-sufficient. Um, but I'll, um, again, there's some things where folks have steered me to look at. So before I publicly state anything, I always want to be responsible. By the way, I'm a big Killer Mike fan. <laughs> what, what does he say? Plot, plan, um, organize, strategize, and mobilize. I, I think that should be the thing. With plot, plan, plot, plan, strategize, organize, and mobilize. Plot, plan, strategize, or, or wait a minute. Plot, plan, strategize, organize, and mobilize. Again, plot, plan, strategize, organize, and mobilize. That needs to be our theme for the entire black community. But, okay, so Walter is a creator. All right, so you created over 500,000 images. You had work. So are you putting them out to sell, Walter? How are you doing that? I'll say this right now. Um, Instagram is a great platform for that. So many artists um, are making a are making a living just by showing, just by showing their art, just by showing the process of their art. And a lot of times people are scared to show their process. Doesn't matter because nobody is built like you. You design yourself. Right. So if if you are like there's some artists out there that are totally amazing that I just marvel at. And I look at them like, how do they do that? And listen, no matter how much I watch and maybe even I get good at, at certain things. Right. I, again, I, I could never duplicate or replicate exactly what they're doing. So their their value is there. So, all right, Walter, I want to pull up your your IG. And you said your IG is your IG is Valor Kingdom, Valor Kingdom. So all right, hold on, let's switch. Um, what's up, Corey? How you doing? Colin Group, how are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy, happy Saturday. Listen, if you all have just joined, this is the Finance Rebel Show. Every Saturday we do wealthy conversations. So every Saturday we talk about something that is involved with positively inspiring that's at least what i'm trying to do positively inspiring wealth creation wealth management wealth preservation and wealth strategy those are the four stages of wealth there's roughly four so i'm always looking to talk about one shape form of this so today we talked about index investing 101 so that would be a wealth creation strategy all right, so Valor Kingdom. So let me share this real quick. We're pulling up Walter's Walter's IG feed. All right, Walter, I hope you got some heat here. Valor Kingdom, I believe, right? It's pulling something wrong. Give me one second. Second, Valor, V O L O R, Kingdom. Uh, I'm not finding it, uh, Walter. Is it? Is it public? 
or maybe maybe um Alar Kingdom of a D at the end. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, let me go back. I got it. V O L O R K I N G D O M. Nothing's coming up. Come on, Walter. Don't let no have me looking bad out here, brother. What we got? What we got? Nothing's coming out. All right, Walter, do me a favor. If you are on Instagram, go on over to Instagram right now. Send me a Valor D. All right. Clearly, I can't spell, y'all. All right, so this is Walter's page. All right, so let's get this up on the screen. That's my bad. Listen, I'm always about taking accountability. <laughs> All right, Walter, so you got a thousand, almost 1,100 subs. So walk us through some of this. Let me see. This looks like a boardwalk scene, South Jersey. Okay, so you're in the area or where you were visiting. Took this in uh, 2015. So why is it special to you, um, Walter? And this is um, like a Chapman, uh, like a Charlie Chapman type. Um, uh, what's the word? I don't know if he's a mime or just an impersonator here. That's what it looks like. I'm not sure what I'm looking at here. Maybe clouds, black clouds. I feel like this is a little Picasso-esque of all the colors. Not necessarily cubism. Now, is this one picture with multiple pictures on top of it? Because like I see this one here on top of this background. This one here. This one here. So are those different images? So let's see. Listen, if anybody has any other questions, <clears throat> we'll be wrapping up soon. Again, today's topic was was investing index investing one hundred one. Index investing one hundred one. And so, uh, this looks interesting. So again, is that on top of what you have there, Walter? Because I'm also like, I'm a big photography fan. So if the hat has been removed, I would have loved to see the rest of the scene here. Rest of the landscape. Because it looks like you have some kind of blue blue tint or blue overlay in a forest setting or um, a vegetative setting. So again, I, I think it's interesting. Um, I'll be honest, I don't, it's not really my style. But again, my style doesn't mean anything. Um it's really about what the market, what the market will do. And again, Walter, this whole NFT space, the NFT space, which, you know, Jay-Z and, and Dame Dash have definitely taken to a whole other level. Just saw earlier this week, a tribe called Quest um, has done an NFT, which is dope, super dope. Um, I think it's, it's, it's uh, interesting. Okay, South Street Seep here. All right, there's a whole series between me and the meme. Okay, you versus the meme. <laughs> the original uh, photograph exists as well. Okay, but yeah, I would put it out. I would put it out there. I would, I would look to do more shows, to market more, potentially to do more stuff, maybe for free. I know, I know, some of y'all get mad at me when I talk about for free, but I got, I got, I got receipts, y'all. And I'm gonna do another. I want to do another episode about free. 
Um, Because it can be very, very powerful when used properly. Again, not talking about not talking about um, giving away the whole kit and caboodle. However, samples were great. Um, And when you look at when you look at either the Asian uh, food buffets and and malls, they stay packed. Why? Because they're always figuring out a way to get people in the markets, even some supermarkets. Right. They do samples. Another great way to get people in the door. Hey, Kelly Zay. Kelly Day, how are you? All right, people are viewing these images all over the world every single day from the site. That's dope. That's dope. Have you put any up for sale? Now, that's the true sale of somebody really finds it valuable. That's at least in your sphere of influence. Put it out for sale. Put something out for sale. Put it up for auction and then see how it goes. See how it goes. But all right, y'all, we've been on for quite some time today. All right, again, remember today we talked about Index Investing 101. Index Investing 101. Remember, many of these shows go up on the podcast. You can find that at Apple, Spotify, Google, Stitcher. Again, the Finance Rebel Show. You can find that there um, and YouTube as well. I appreciate all the likes, all the comments. I need more, y'all. I need more. Trying to help more people. I'm trying to help more people. But again, I appreciate all of you. Um, You all have a great day. Y'all have a great weekend. And remember, on this weekend, this is Independence Day weekend, go and do some Frederick Douglass readings. He had a phenomenal speech on uh, like the day before Independence Day. So what is Independence Day to a slave? Um, Because when this country first inked those documents, black folks were treated as mere animals. And many would say, even to this day, black folks are still treated as mere animals. So go back, do some history, do some research, check out Douglas and everything that went on, went along during that time period and now, and now. All right. So I know some of y'all might be saying, well, why is Kamari talking about history and investing? Well, if you remember, I talked about what is your why? And I know most of my audience is black, right? So part of your why, in my opinion, should be freedom. And so part of a part of not all part of us getting free is being financially free. And that is serious business. y'all. That's serious business. So listen, I appreciate all of y'all again. I'll be back on Monday. I have a new show coming, a new show coming, but I'm not going to announce it just yet. I'll let you guys know the next time I come. All right, y'all, y'all have a great night, great weekend, great evening, love on somebody, hug somebody, and tell somebody you appreciate them. And do me a favor, stop judging so many folks. All right, have a great day.